time to learn a little bit about Tableau. To start, we're going to open a data set called the Global Superstore. This should be available on the My Educator site. Go ahead and download that. Now, once you download that, open up Tableau and go to Connect to a File, Excel. Click on Excel and make sure you get the Global Superstore file. It's a large file, almost 18 megabytes, probably in your Downloads folder. So go ahead and open that up and it should take you to this page. Drag the orders table into this area here and it will automatically populate down here. Now you'll know you have the right data set if in the country column you see multiple countries listed and not just the United States. If you have just the United States listed, you probably clicked on Superstore right here, which is different. It's not the exact same data set. It's a fairly limited data set. So let's go back to where we were. Okay. Dragging orders in. And the first thing you'll do is down here, there's a little button next to all these tabs. And if you don't have any tabs, that's fine. Don't worry about it. If you have extra tabs, don't worry about it. We're just going to create our own tabs. So next to the last tab, there's a little button that says new worksheet. Click on that. Here's the blank canvas and has opportunities to do all sorts of things. Add columns, rows, filters, all sorts of little functionality. And the way the data is organized is on the left, we have dimensions. Those are the things that you wouldn't necessarily want to do math on. So things like country and market and order date, you're not going to do math on these things. So they won't go in this values area, but they might go in the columns or rows or in the filters. And then below that, you have measures. These are the things you do want to do math on. Things like discount, profit, sales, quantity, shipping costs. All of these things are mathable variables. So let's look at our sleuthing problems, the Tableau sleuthing problems, also available on the My Educator site. I've included the answers in here already, just so we can make sure we're on the right track as we're going through these. So using that global superstore data, let's see if we can find the correct answer or a correct answer or a good answer is probably the best way to say it to each of these questions. First, which country is least profitable overall in general? The easiest way to figure this out is just to click on country, single click, and then click on profit. These are the two variables that the question talks about. And then you can click on the show me here. Let's see if I can get that to show. There it is. And it has highlighted with color all the available graphs it can automatically produce with the selected variables, country and profit. It's grayed out all the ones that it won't automatically produce. Since we're dealing with geo-based data, country, I'm going to use a map. And it automatically generates this map for me. Now, the colors indicate Profit. You can see over here, some profit is with colors. That's what this little Venn diagram is, colors. And it's the sum of profit. And you can see that the most profitable country is dark green. That is the United States. We've made $286,000 in the United States. And then the least profitable country would be in dark red. I see two dark red. One is here. That's Nigeria, negative 80,000. And Turkey, negative 98,000. So Turkey is the least profitable country in our data set. Now we can look at this another way if we want. Let's go look at this bar chart. And you can see the bars on the right are profit positive. The bars on the left are profit negative or a loss. If we scroll down, we can see how big each bar is. And the biggest negative bar is, in fact, Turkey, negative 98,000. So that's the answer to that question. Which one is the most profitable? Well, I think we just answered that. USA, again, we can go back to these bars and look, and the biggest positive bar is the United States with $286,000. We could also do that by going back to the map and viewing it this way. Darkest green means most positive. Next question, how much profit have we made in Japan? Well, simple enough, put your mouse over Japan, and it says 24,328. We know that's the sum of the profit, so that is the total amount we have made in that location minus costs. Very good. And that is the correct answer. Here's something a little more subjective. Why are we losing money in Ireland? 
So, there are many different ways we could go about this. First off, let's just confirm that Ireland is actually a profit sink. Indeed, Ireland, negative $7,392 so far. Well, that's not good. Let's find out why. It could be due to things like, let's see, discount. Are we offering too much discount there? Are we having too high of shipping costs? Let's, let's try that one. Let's pull out profit and we'll pull shipping costs into color here. We also have the option to pull it into size, label, detail, tooltip. We're gonna pull it into color. We'll use those others later. You can see that the greater the cost, the more green, so the higher the number. Now, I don't wanna look at the sum of shipping costs. I wanna see on average, what are our shipping costs? So I'm gonna click on this little down arrow on the pill and where it says measure sum, I'm gonna change that measure to average. And now we see the average cost of shipping something to each of these countries. Beware, don't ship to Chad, it costs a lot of money. Let's go up to Ireland. Ireland, it's only $19, which is fairly similar to all the countries around. In fact, a little bit less than a lot of these countries. So it's not due to shipping costs that we're losing money there. Well, let's check out, instead of shipping costs, let's check out discounts. Put that into color. And I don't want to see the sum of discounts. Again, I want to see the average. On each sale, how much am I giving off of discounting? Change that measure to average. And now we have some distinctions. Look at Kazakhstan. Yikes, we are offering a 70% discount on average just so they'll buy our stuff. That's pretty pathetic, I guess. Uh, let's see, Zimbabwe, same. Now what about Ireland? Oof, we're offering a 50% discount on everything we give them, or on average at least. That's crazy, we're selling them things for half off, half price. That's the most likely reason we're losing money in Ireland, is because we're not actually taking a profit on our sales, because we're giving them away for half off. So that's what I would say. So why are we losing money? Discounts. Which specific product subcategory would you recommend we rethink selling due to profitability issues? Again, this is fairly subjective. We can go make a case for probably several items. But let's try this. Go down here, create a new worksheet. And we want to know about the subcategory. That's hidden down here. There we go, subcategory. And profit, I think is what it said, right? Based on profit? Let's see. Which specific profit uh, due to profitability issues? Okay, so profit, subcategory, and it has a bunch of things we can, a bunch of different ways we can view it. Pie graph, kind of ugly. I would like the bubble chart. Ah, that's nice. Now, anytime you create a graph, it's really important to know what it is you're looking at. What do each of the features, such as size and color, actually indicate? In this case, does red indicate bad? No, it just indicates, let's see, colors indicate category or subcategory, I guess. I don't want that. I would like um, to pull that out completely now they're all the same color and we can determine what determines color. Let's have profit determine color. So pull sum of profit into color. There we go. And now let's pull, let's pull quantity into size. So I wanna know, what are we selling the most of? Looks like we're selling the most of binders, right? But we're not making a ton of money on each one. Whereas with copier, copiers, we're making a ton of money on each one, but we're not selling a ton of them. Now, which one are we making no money on? We're actually losing money on tables. And we're selling not too many, but it's, it's, it's enough to be worrying about. We've sold 3,000 of these and made a net loss of $64,000. We need to reconsider how we're selling or marketing these tables, or who we're selling them to, or what is causing us to lose so much money on tables. So that would be my recommendation, rethink tables. Okay, talks about average profit. Let's just take a quick look at that. We have the total profit, the sum of profit. If we wanted the color to represent the average profit, again, you just click on this down arrow next to the pill, or on the pill, and change measure sum to measure average. And there we go, oof, we're losing on 
average $74 per table. That's awful. Whereas with copiers, we're making on average $116. Nice. Okay. If you had to pick one country to stop selling tables to, which one would you pick based on profit? Well, we could do this again a number of ways. Let's do it this way. If you, if you don't know how to start, again, the best way probably is just to click on the variables you know you're interested in. In this case, it's profit, subcategory, and country. But what this is going to do is produce a massive amount of data. We're not interested in every subcategory. So I'm going to unclick them, go down to subcategory, and I'm going to pull this into filters very first. And I'm going to uncheck everything by clicking none, and then go down to tables and just check tables. There we go. Hit OK. Now we're only going to look at tables. And now we're interested in, let's go up here, country and profit. And it will only give us data for tables because that's in the filter. So here we go. Let's click on the map because we're only looking at profit and country at this point. And you can see that the sum of profit, total profit, loss we're making is greatest in the U.S. We've lost $17,725 on tables in the U.S. And in various other places, we've lost some money as well. Now, if we want to know how much we're losing on average per sale per country by tables, what we do is change this to, instead of sum of profit, change it to average of profit. And we can see in the U.S. it's actually not too bad. <laughs> if you consider losing $56 per sale, not bad. Things are great in Russia. We're making 388 bucks per sale of a table. That's awesome. The worst countries seem to be Sweden, where we're losing, yikes, 1,700 bucks per table. That's a pricey table. And in Lithuania, $2,750 per table, at least per sale with a table in it. That's awful and ridiculous, perhaps redonkulous. So I would rethink selling to Lithuania. We're doing it wrong. We need to study what we're doing in Russia or some of these other more profitable countries like Zambia and figure out why we're making money in those countries on table sales and why we're not making money in Lithuania or Sweden on table sales. Cool. Which product subcategory has shown the best profit growth in the US? Okay, whenever you're talking about growth, we're talking about over time. And in this case, it's profit over time, I think, or is it sales over time, excuse me? Let's see, it's profit growth. Okay, profit over time. Let's create a new sheet. And we want to know, was it just for the USA? Just for the USA. So we're going to pull country into the filter. So we can immediately filter out everything else. Just do the USA. Now you can type up here in the search area, United, and that will filter it up to the top. And we get United States. I'll check that box. Hit OK. And now we're just going to be looking at United States data. We want to know about profit and subcategory. So here's subcategory. Let's see what we can do. Ah, but we want to look over time as well. So let's do order date, which is up here. Order date, hold control. There we go. Anytime you do time-based information, it's pretty good to do a line graph. So I'm going to click on line graphs. And here's what we can see. Let's see if I can get rid of this show me for a sec. Okay. We are looking at, on the y-axis, profit, on the x-axis, time, and these lines represent the, each of the different subcategories. So we're looking for a positive trend line. The only one that I can see that is consistently positive is this red one, which is copiers. Back in 2011, we made 2,900 bucks on copiers, and now we're making 25 thousand dollars on copiers. That is quite an increase. That's great. Nothing else seems to be jumping in that consistent direction. So, answer is copiers. Nice. What kind of trend, again line graph and time, do we typically observe in sales across the four quarters each year? So this is regardless of country, regardless of product or subcategory. We just want to know sales, not profit, sales across 
quarters. Let's see what we can do with that. Let's create a new sheet. We want to know sales over time. So we're going to do order date. Oops. Ah, what did I just do? If you make a mistake, here's the back arrow or control Z. All right. Back to sales and order date. And we're going to look over time. And what this does is it automatically um, detects what kind of time increments we want. And it says year here. That's what it's guessed. But I don't want year. I'm going to click on this left expand plus sign and change it to quarter. Cool. And we can see that quarter, let's see, down here, 2011, quarter one, two, three, four. As you go across the quarters, sales increase. Then back in January, they drop. And then in December, they're high again. January drop, December high again. Very consistent trend. So that's one way to look at trends over time over quarters. And I would say the answer to that is an increasing trend, right? What kind of trend do we typically observe? It's an increasing one. Cool. I think that's all the questions we have. Now, what I showed you here was just a very, very limited set of questions you could answer with Tableau. Tableau is an amazingly powerful tool and can do all sorts of descriptive analysis and forecasting and all sorts of amazing other things. So I hope this has piqued your interest and uh, interested you to go and learn more about Tableau.